In this position White's best line of defense consists in keeping his pawn where it stands at h2. As soon as the pawn is advanced it becomes easier for Black to win. On the other hand, Black's plan to win, supposing that White does not advance his pawn, may be divided into three parts. The first part will be to get his king to h3, at the same time keeping intact the position of his pawns. This is all important, since, in order to win the game, it is essential at the end that black may able to advance his rearmost pawn one or two squares according to the position of the white king. King g3 King e3 King g2 If king g4, king f2, h4, g6 will win. King f4 King f2 King g4 King g2 King h4 King g1 King h3 The first part has been completed. The second part will be short and will consist in advancing the h-pawn up to the king. King h1 h5 King g1. h4. This ends the second part. The third part will consist in timing the advance of the g pawn so as to play g4, g3 when the white king is at h1. It now becomes evident how necessary it is to be able to move the g pawn either one or two squares according to the position of the white king, as indicated previously. In this case, as it is white's move, the pawn will be advanced two squares since the white king will be in the corner, but if it were now black's move the g-pawn should only be advanced one square since the white king is at g1. King h1 g5 King g1 g4 King h1 g3 h takes g3 if king g1, g2. h takes g3. king g1. g2. king f2. king h2. Black wins. It is in this analytical way that the student should try to learn. He will thus train his mind to follow a logical sequence in reasoning out any position. This example is excellent training, since it is easy to divide it into three stages and to explain the main point of each part.